Good morning, everybody. This is Jeff J. Brown in still steamy, really sticky Shenzhen, uh, just south of the Tropic of uh, Cancer. Um, today's podcast is very interesting, very informative. As you, There's actually several images, uh, bunches of hyperlinks, so get to the uh, source page, which I will post with this podcast, and you can follow along while you listen and read. Uh, let me take a sip of my tea here. Hey, don't tell anybody, but I actually mixed a cup of mint tea and a cup of golden thread herb. I know mixing teas is a vile violation of of, of tea etiquette and tea protocol, but you want to know something? It actually tastes really good. All right. All right, here's the title. A review of Godfrey Roberts' Yin Yang, a She Trump Crystal Ball Predictions. There's a picture of a crystal ball full of lightning uh, with the Yin Yang symbol in it. Love or hate? War or peace? The good, the bad, and the ugly? Let's see how Godfrey Roberts' crystal ball uh, performed last week. Here we go. The day before U.S. President Donald J. Trump, uh, abbreviated DJT, arrived in Beijing November 8th through the 10th for meetings with Chinese President Xi Jinping, abbreviated XJP, I had Dr. Godfrey Roberts on the China Rising Radio Sinoland show to make his predictions about what would transpire. Godfrey made two bold statements, one about Sino-American relations and the other about Korea. For the former, to paraphrase, Godfrey said, She understands that Trump needs a crowd-pleasing victory back home and will deliver on that goal. China will use its very successful millennial tributary system to help Trump bring home the bacon, and DJT will tacitly integrate his presidency into this ancient diplomatic framework. Godfrey clearly hit a home run here. Trump was telegraphing success before his arrival, even calling XJP the King of China, which is very tributary indeed. All the mainstream pundits who were gloating that Trump would walk away empty-handed have egg all over their faces, as is often true with these ideological communism-socialism China haters. She and Trump helped garner over a quarter of a trillion with a T dollars in bilateral business deals. The value of these deals is unprecedented in Sino-American relations and may be the second biggest on diplomatic record. <clears throat> the only bigger one that I've ever heard of was Xi's and Putin's $400 billion uh, gas oil pipeline deal, which I wrote about recently. <clears throat> Trump was also very vocal about how much he likes and respects XJP while touting their mutual friendship as well as his admiration for the Chinese people and their civilization. DJT's granddaughter even sang a Chinese song to Grandpa Xi, beamed beamed into Beijing via satellite. Trump was treated like royalty while while in China and continuously showed his appreciation for Beijing, Baba Beijing's efforts from the welcoming ceremony to the f- two first couples' private tour of the Forbidden City to the state banquet there. A stratospheric quarter trillion dollars in deals were inked. Trump did well for his people, can claim a big victory back home, and she represented his citizens honorably. The whole visit had the feel of a Ming Dynasty state visit, with 600 years of technology layered on top. Thus, we can say Godfrey's prediction that Sino-American relations will start taking on the form of China's win-win tributary system has serious merit. The results over Korea were less clear. To be honest, in their joint press conference, it looked like DJT and XJP more or less kicked the can down the road. Nothing of any great importance was announced other than the two sides needed each other to solve the problem. It should all happen through the United Nations, and military action was not the answer. Given the bellicose aggression the United States has been projecting in Korea since the end of World War II, see my footnote below, 
One could say that this was an important public acceptance of Asian real politic from typically high-handed, we'll do whatever the hell we want, even if it's illegal, Imperial America. But this is hardly a headline-grabbing victory for Trump. Then yesterday in Vietnam, Trump again announced that Baba Beijing was working hard on the Korea issue. So clearly behind the scenes, a lot is going on that the public is not privy to. This was confirmed by U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson when he met with XJP at the end of September, declaring that America was in direct contact with DPRK, undoubtedly through the good offices of China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. DPRK, of course, meaning the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, North Korea. Thus, Godfrey's hopeful prediction, and he admitted it was a long shot, that some kind of cross-border cooperation would be announced did not come to fruition. But I will make a bold prognostication myself. Before Trump leaves the White House, either he or Tillerson will meet with DPRK leader Kim Jong-un. I'll let you on a little secret. It's what Trump wants. In his own inimitable way, DJT said exactly that in an official tweet yesterday. And then there's the tweet that um, uh, he said uh, something to that effect. This is not the first time. In May 2017, DJT said this about DPRK leader Kim Jong-un. If it would be appropriate for me to meet with him, I would absolutely, I, I would absolutely, I would be honored to do it. Most political people would never say that, but I'm telling you, under the right circumstances, I would meet with him. We have breaking news. I'll say that most Westerners would never say that. If this transpires, guess where it will happen? In China, of course. I think this is what she and Trump are working towards, with mucho behind-the-scenes help from the Russians, who also have some serious historical and border skin in the Korean game. They admitted as much last week. The problem in Urangloland will go... The problem is Urangloland will go to war before allowing the Korean Peninsula to, to peacefully reunite. You can say what you want, but as far as Asian American affairs are concerned, DJT is working hard for his citizens, which is more than can be said about America's previous presidents, going back as many administrations as you care to argue. Trump even came out and said exactly that. Listen to his apex speech in Vietnam. The last president who talked like this was Ronald Reagan, and then further back to John F. Kennedy and Franklin D. Roosevelt. Love them or not, they all had something other recent presidents have lacked, vision. One thing is clear. I don't think we could have survived another four years of deep state, Wall Street elitism in the White House. As much as people hate DJT, I shudder at the thought of uber-imperial Hillary Clinton being president. Conversely, you may not approve of Trump's vision, but you know where he stands. He has clearly articulated his intention to defend his country's interests and improve the lot of the American people, which is what any respectable leader should do who is worth their salt. Sadly, sodium chloride has been sorely lacking in Washington and London since the 1980s and in Paris since Nicolas Sarkozy was president. After China, DJT went to Communist Socialist Vietnam to meet President Tran De Chuang. Trump's delegation inked $12 billion in contracts. While comparatively puny to China's Leviathan showstopper, remember that Vietnam is economic <coughs> economically like one province in China, and China has 34 of them, so this amount is about right. In their joint press conference, Trump said something jaw-dropping that is utter blasphemy in the deep state Washington, London, Paris, Tel Aviv. He said, The United States is open to a free and open Indo-Pacific, where strong and independent nations respect each other's sovereignty, uphold the rule of law, and advance responsible commerce. We want our partners in the Indo-Pacific to be proud and self-reliant, not proxies or satellites. Wow. Trump clearly sees the diminishing marginal returns of the West's imperial colonial model, and in his mind, 
He hopes to change 500 centuries of one-sided exploitation, extraction, resource invasions, sacking, pillaging, and genocide. Again, love him or hate him, but DJT has a vision that is antithetical to the deep state's policy of total global domination and destruction. Now, the big question is, what happens when Trump gets off Air Force One in Washington tomorrow after his successful Asian tour? How does he work through and around the Departments of Defense, Justice, and State, the CIA NSA complex, oil bankers, military contractors, prostituted U.S. Congress, and this murderous collective deep state's equally corrupt mainstream media myrmidons? without ending up dead like JFK or framed and booted out of office like Richard, I don't want to go out like Jack, Nixon. Trump knows why Jack and Dick met their fates. He knows speeches like the ones he gave this week in Asia about working with other countries, not as proxies and satellites, but in mutual respect and on a level playing field is tantamount to him signing his own death sentence. This helps explain why the Department of Justice's Secret Service, which happily cooperated to help murder John and Robert Kennedy, have been sidelined by DJT's own loyal security team. (laughs) This is a smart man. People of influence who speak truth to imperial power usually end up in the morgue. And so it goes. This helps explain why Trump seems to blow so hot and cold. On November 11th, he declared that the whole Russiagate propaganda campaign is obviously fake news. Well, duh. Then yesterday, he backtracked and hedged that commit that comment. He has JFK's fate under wraps with his own loyal security detail. However, he has to throw the deep state Komodo dragons a piece of meat once in a while if he hopes to not go out like Nixon, which is what these deep state Saurians are trying to do with all these trumped up, (laughs) pardon the pun, fake allegations. In closing, when analyzing all the background to these events, Donald Trump is a very brave man indeed, who is risking his life or his historical reputation for his vision of a post-Western imperial world order. It just so happens to be that the same dream is in China, Uh, Russia, North Korea, Iran, Syria, Venezuela, Bolivia, Cuba, Eritrea, etc., which gives me hope. This is Jeff J. Brown, China Rising Radio Sinoland, signing out from Shenzhen. Bye-bye.